Welcome to Capital AB. I'm Unreal, and today we are going to interview Jonathan, Julia, and Rafaelos, that they have been working in a collective project with different kind of disciplines. And welcome, guys. I would like to know more about who are you as a person and also what do you do as an artist. And we, I would like to start with Jonathan, if you could. Hello. Yes. Yes, I'm, I'm Jonathan. I'm from Denmark and I'm 21 years old. Um, I am a dancer, which means I'm studying at Code Arts, the University of the Arts here in Rotterdam. And besides that, I enjoy writing. I have a job at a cafe. I enjoy cooking. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about me, I guess. Cool. Thank you, Jonathan. Julia, can you introduce yourself? Yes, uh, my name is Julia and I'm um, studying fine art at the Willem de Koning Academy. And um, yeah, I'm very interested in writing so or storytelling in general, if that's via text or spoken text or in video. Yeah, and besides, yeah, I enjoy reading and um, I'm doing quite a lot of research at the moment. I'm researching on sleep and the role it kind of plays in, in culture across um, across the centuries, basically. So yeah, that's about me. Thank you very much. And Rafaelos? Yeah, my, my name is Rafaelos Christofin. I'm, uh, I'm from Cyprus and I'm in my second year bachelor in classical composition here at Codarts. I'm a new member in Capital Avi Original with, uh, with Danny. Yes. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty much new in the composition world and I'm interested mainly in uh, film scoring. Okay. So that's a nice opportunity that we got to work in this movie. Yes, cool. Okay, you were working for really two weeks or three weeks in a blind date project. Could some of you introduce what this blind date project was about? For example, Jonathan. Sure. Yeah, so Blind Date is a, a collaborative project between uh, Code Arts, which is an art school here in Rotterdam, and uh, Willem de Koning Academy, which is also an art school uh, in the city. And basically, they throw a group of students together. I think we're just approximately 10 students, dancers, composers, and fine art students. Um, and then it was very open-ended. Uh, we got a theme called virtual empathy and then we could basically do whatever we wanted with this word and create a, a short film uh, including our different arts disciplines in it uh, together okay incredible uh, we have a thriller about your piece we could watch it first it's going to be also play at the beginning of this interview to people get really into what's happening and then we will come into the interview and now i just want to Share the screen and record uh, your 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 <laughs> your reactions and how is this <laughs> scene okay? Okay, it's quite intense. <laughs> really sure, but super intense. Cool. What does it mean, capture? Uh, Julia, could you give us a bit of explanation? Sure. So, capture means completely automated public Turing test to tell computers and humans apart. And basically, captures are the little exercises that you have to solve when you want to access certain websites, and then it says, I'm not a robot. And then sometimes you have to type in like a combination of letters or you have to choose which image displays a traffic light or sometimes you just have to click on a little box and then it says okay you're not a robot and yeah i think we were really interested in this strangeness of having to prove that you're human yeah what, what makes us human yeah cool thank you really excited i really want to show to the world the end result uh, Raffaello, could you explain us more a bit about the movie and how was the process and how did you manage to work all these kind of different artists into one 
line and to create that movie? Well, the time frame was obviously very small. We, in the beginning, we didn't know me and Lotto, my my teammate composer, didn't know how to how to begin or how to begin begin to approach our writing or recording sessions. So we just went the first day all in. We didn't have anything basically. We had only a meeting that we had with all the team together to discuss the the theme. So we went all in the first day and we started writing and writing a lot of variations of what we thought the main theme would be or what we, how do we, how do we uh, make in music the, the essence of the, of the meaning of what we wanted to show, how do we translate that? And every time we recorded something and every time we wrote something, we were going straight back to the studio of the dancers and say, guys, we have this you want something on that. And I can say that mostly our, I don't know, 60% of the music that we wrote went to the bin because we didn't have enough time to work specifically on the requirements of the things that we needed to write. Because normally we will have the video and then we will do the music on top. But because of the time frame, we, we needed to work parallel everywhere, everything. So. It, it was it was difficult, but it was a pleasant uh, experience. Nice, thank you, Rafaelos. Okay, Julia, uh, you, how was for you the process in the, in the team? Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I mean, I think it was quite difficult because of the Corona situation, of course. Because I imagine usually we would have just been able to work like together in a physical space and to discuss everything right away. And yeah, it was a a lot more challenging I think that way but I well the first week I think I was mainly at home and researching um, a bit on the topic and trying to write down um, the general concept and then always being in contact with the dancers and the composers and seeing what kind of ideas they had and I think I really tried to like kind of bring it down and make it like a coherent thing and write everything down and make a storyboard so um, that could help us a bit with the filming eventually. So that was very much the first part and I was actually very happy about the way it went because it was super fluid, especially we were Skyping a lot with the dancers and like everybody brought in ideas. It was very like energetic and I really enjoyed uh, enjoyed doing that. And then later during the filming, um, I mean, we also had to face a lot of difficulties due to Corona, but um, I think it was very much learning by doing because I think we all didn't really have a lot of experience in filmmaking. So we just went on location and tried to be as prepared as possible and then saw what we could do with the skills that we had. Yeah, but it was a lot of fun. Generally. And I'm curious, what's your field, what you are specialized in Bill and the Connie? Uh, fine art. Okay, cool. <laughs> but okay, it's nice. And uh, Jonathan, could you now give us how was the experience for the dancers and the movers? Yeah, um, I think that uh, like Rafael has explained how often when you write music for something, you have the final result. Similar in dance, usually we choreograph on music. That happens a lot that you have a finished piece and then you you make a dance. But we actually created without music, which is quite interesting. I think that's the big challenge in a collaborative process is that everything kind of happens at once and everything molds the other things, um, which is challenging, but also can make a really beautiful result. I also really like the fact that, um, yeah, that we played different roles. Like Julia said, none of us really had a lot of filming experience, but there were times where even I had to film. That's also really fun sometimes to not just be in the studio and practicing your own craft, but this really allowed us to explore different, you know, areas of of the arts and of what it takes to make a film. Cool. I think people that is watching us should be super excited saying like, where is the link where we can find this? I really want to watch it. You know, I really recommend you to go and watch it the first time that this release. And now I would like to ask you more questions about what about Capital AB theme and also about more personal questions to know who is the human behind all these masterpieces. And then let's start because one of the 
belief that we have in Catalavi is that communities are the future currency. And I would like to know what do you think, Julia? Do you think that's true? Do you think what's your opinion about? Yeah, I definitely think that's true. And I think there was also something I found very beautiful working on the Blind Date project is that, well, maybe I'm wrong, but I had the feeling that the dancers have a lot more of a community among them than, for example, in fine art. I feel like we're all pretty much individuals working on their own things. And I really enjoyed like seeing the dancers being like a group and having yeah just a strong connection with each other, probably also because of the way they are working. But that was very inspiring. And I also generally think that the system we live in kind of makes us individuals and to go against the logic of the system, it's good to like organize in communities or collectives and like find ways of mutual care. And um, yeah, I'm also since September part of an environmental climate collective uh, from VDKA. And we're also like figuring out how to work as a community. And what I realized is that um, you also, it's way easier to reach out to like professionals or organizations because you know that there's people like in your back and um, you have a lot further reach in a way. And um, I really enjoyed also just collaborating and being in a group and getting like the opinions and insights and ideas of a lot of people. That's so nice. Actually, all of you, you're super welcome to join Capital V community, where actually we work in different circles. And I want to explain it fast because we have the people who observe art and we want to try to reach as much people and to give and make reachable art for everyone, right? And then there's these people who has projects that any if any day you have any project individual that you would like to promote, that's also something that we would love. And you can always contact me and say, hey, we have this, we're gonna share it to the wall. And then we use our tools to do it. And then we have more educational courses where, because one of the missions of Capital V is to improve the quality life of the artists in a healthy and wealthy way. And right now I just developed like a course of two weeks where we try to make it the super artist mind and how an artist, for example, that is not a mover can start to develop movement to get also inspiration and to keep creating their own art. And that thing, I think it's super interesting and also brings a lot of people that wants to take action and wants to be interdisciplinary to work together and to get involved with them. And then we have the more inside circle where it's people super motivated that want to take and just push Capital V, whatever we want. And if you are crazy and you will say, okay, I want to do this, you're always welcome to come and say, I have this idea, I wanna make it reality. Let's try to make it happen. Um, I'm gonna start to ask you, what do you do for a living if you have any jobs? And I would like to start with Jonathan because he introduced it a bit, but. Yes, um, I do have a job. Um, I work in the kitchen of a cafe here in Rotterdam, but it's difficult as a dance student, you have a very tight schedule five days a week. I'm usually when it's not uh, a Corona lockdown, I'm usually in the studio from the morning until five, six, sometimes seven in the evening. Cool. Rafaelos, what do you do for a living? And yeah, what's your current situation? Uh, currently I'm a, I'm a, a freelancer in like an all online freelancer in uh, platforms like uh, Upwork or uh, Fiverr. And uh, I'm a contract uh, freelancer. And my last two contracts was a music transcriber in the, in the online uh, piano learning website Scove. Check it out. It's really nice, actually. And uh, as I said before, I uh, recently was added to the group of Cartelavi. Yes. And it's going to keep me pretty busy. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's okay. it. Cool, man. Thank you for sharing that. And Julia, what do you do for a living? Do you need to find a job to keep your artistic life? Or are you working as an artist right now? Uh, yeah, so I usually always work during the summer in a restaurant. And um, yeah, working very, very intensely. So that helps me to support my life. And I was also um, 
giving some support classes for yeah, school children basically, but I stopped doing that. So I'm currently looking for a job in Rotterdam, which is not the best situation <laughs> um, with Corona, especially. Yeah, I also volunteer in, in an art space in Rotterdam, which is called A Tale of a Tap. It's also quite interesting to talk with the people who come because there are yeah, there are different groups of people. Some come very specifically because they're interested in art and others just drop by. And I always like talking with them about what they see and what they think about it. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, Julia. And knowing that what makes you decide to become an artist or to start to dance or to start finance or to start composition, because we know that it's not the job that you are going to do money. It's not the purpose, but it's something that really screams you inside. I would like to know what was the beginning for all of you that you said, yes, I want to do this as my living. And I would like to start with Rafaelos. Well, I was, well, since I was very little, I, I liked guitar. I started uh, learning guitar, but uh, then little by little, I discovered like like writing at something little down and playing it, and that little made it a little bit bigger and bigger. And I realized that that this is what I want to do. I was always interested in doing things. I was I I love doing things with my hands, like creating stuff or painting, and so. I figured that, that this is the, the golden spot, the combination of everything. And then I experienced something that most uh, musicians don't experience because a violin player goes to the stage, but he doesn't, yeah, he gives his performance, but he doesn't really enjoy himself. He, he won't see it on the audience and play on the stage at the same time. But I figured that as a composer, I can do that and I love it. It's the best part of the, of the job that I did something, I created something, I, did, I had my performance in my studio, in my office, and then I get to see it and enjoy the thing I wrote. And for me, that's amazing and something that I, I, I didn't find anybody anywhere else. Jonathan. Can you tell us how did you start dancing and why? Yes, um, my connection is a bit unstable, but I hope you can hear me, yeah? Yes. Okay, good. Um, yeah, I also, like Rafaelos, I also, I started dancing in my living room from like, I don't even remember. I really loved like dressing up and giving small performances to my family, but also singing, I actually ended up starting to dance ballet when I was 13 because I wanted to be a musical theater performer. Um, and then I took ballet classes and I just like, it kind of swept me away because I really, I just fell in love with, with dance. Um, but especially recently I found that I think like what I really love is creating and expressing. And like when I'm at home, I'll like, sew on my mom's sewing machine or like play the piano even and like even if I hadn't like I think maybe by coincidence I discovered dance and found out that that's what I'm really passionate about but I think um you know if my life had gone in a different direction maybe I would have become I don't know <laughs> a writer a musical theater performer um so yeah I think that's like what you mentioned about bubbles. I think, of course, you pick something that you really dive deep into and you perfect your craft. But um, yeah, considering myself strictly dancer, I don't think it's very helpful. Uh, so yeah. Cool, thank you very much, Jonathan. And let me remind you that after talking with Julia, I would like to comment and talk about this money issue and arts. But tell me, Julia, first, how did you start finance and where did came this artistic initiative inside you? Um, yeah, I think just like Rafaelos and Jonathan, I also started very early on to be like super creative and did a lot of things like circus performances or <laughs> drawing or writing. And then later I actually mainly wanted to be a writer, but somehow I really got towards like towards more visual arts um, when I was 16 or something and um, like 
books and movies and artworks were always what, I don't know, kept me going and what inspired me the most and made me enjoy life. That's, that's super nice. And at the end, what they see in all of you, that you have an artist inside and it's not, I'm, I'm not a dancer, I'm not a musician, I'm not just this, I'm an artist and I do what I feel in the moment and you try to always get as many tools inside yourself to really develop your message and communicate it. And that's amazing and that's what I'm incentivating to all the artists around the world to really moving and taking things from other points of view. And talking about money because we all want to live thanks to our art and sometimes our society doesn't value art enough and it's weird because actually when we came to this wall we were painting on the walls right we were dancing on the fire making music it was something really ritual in a tribe a connection into this world right and also if the wall is going to disappear imagine that there's a huge apocalypse right and we are almost dying and then you think what do i prefer to have to my side a lawyer a president or maybe a doctor could be nice but anyway if you know that you are gonna die it's it could be more useful to have someone that can give you that artistic energy and maybe dance and sing for you and play for you right and just give that last moments okay the world is gonna disappear and i'm gonna do it with a huge feeling of pleasure inside myself and i don't know i would like to ask you if you know how we can fix that problem first of all if you know if you feel that art is infravalorated and if it's so how we can give that extra value to the world and i would like to start with julia because i'm really curious about what do you think mm. I think there are like a lot of possible answers to that, but no definitive answer. But something that I'm thinking about a lot is that there's a, a certain problem of communication maybe between art and society, because art is often perceived as something that is very difficult and very like inaccessible. And like, you have to understand that and if you don't understand it, you're stupid or something. Like I see this kind of thinking about art in a lot of people. And I think that the responsibility is with the artist in a way to try to make their works in a sense more accessible. But then of course it depends on the kind of like discourse. How do you talk about your art? How do you make it more accessible? But then also the institutions that promote art and to like, I mean, they're addressing a certain public and um, the question is which public do they address? and then of course also the people themselves to get away from this thinking that you have to understand something or that art is difficult and that like you have to prove something. I think that's a big problem. I don't know. I think like talking to people is a good first step and like talking to what people are thinking about and what they are interested in and then trying to find a bridge between what you as an artist and your very like specific bubble and very specific interest want to address but also how that is relevant in society and how you can like bridge this gap and make it more accessible for me my relationship of money is that you give value right and in return you receive another kind of value in our society we use money and that's what we do as much value do you give to the world that means that as much money comes to you but that doesn't mean that i'm stealing it when i'm doing something wrong if i'm helping you thanks to my art that means that you will appreciate and give that in return with money and if we can become millionaire thanks to our art why not you know it's like i think and if people see the possibility that you can really make money thanks to art because you are giving a lot of value super amounts of value into the society I think more people will be interested about joining this kind of artistic wall. Yeah, and I would like to know the opinion of Jonathan. Sorry, Julia, I, so I said it was a question for you, but Jonathan could reflect on this and just say, what, what do you think? And Yeah, I, uh, I think it's really what is amazing about artists that it's also, Julia said something about this, how, uh, art also makes knowledge, like art can teach things. It can be as commercial as if you know the Netflix show, The Crown, like 
I think so many more people in the world know about the history of the English monarchy now than they did two years ago before the crown was released. But, and that's art, you know, um, but it can also be really complex. It can be artistic research, what Julia does now about sleep. Um, I think, uh, I think that's beautiful. And I think actually that there's a hard balance for artists between making art that pushes the boundaries and produces new knowledge. And then the fact that a lot of people like to see what they know and um, producing art that is appealing to an audience. I think this sort of like balance is always really hard to find. Um, however, I think inside there's this understanding that art is entertainment only uh, and also entertainment for educated people who are rich and have the money to spend excess on it. But I actually really believe the contrary. I think that art is, art is essential to moving our society forward and yeah, producing knowledge. Now I would like to know Raffaello's opinion in the world of music because I think they have better systems with copyright and how to protect the art that as a dancer normally we dance on music that has someone else right and then <laughs> you cannot earn on anything almost right and we are all artists in different bubbles competing for what where are we going okay Raffaello you can talk well in 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 my opinion I don't want to get rich I mean I just want to uh, be comfortable uh, to live by doing what I love. I mean, this is what everybody wants. Just the difference is that until now, some professions had a head start. And for many reasons, they are more wealthy business. But it started with people loving what they're doing. For example, I mean, a doctor, for example, now it's a wealthy profession, but you don't just become a doctor. You, are, you need to want and have the passion to help people and cure people. And evidently now it's a, it, it, it's a wealthy profession. What I'm saying is that why not the artist also? Why not the composer or why not the dancer be the same? The goal, for me, it's to not become wealthy, it's to support myself and my family by doing what I love. And I want to one day, uh, like, look my kid in the eye and tell him, you know what? Everybody said that you are going to, uh, to uh, die hungry by being an artist. I want to tell him, you know what? I did it. You can too. You don't have to be an artist, but do whatever, whatever it comes to your head that you like and do it and you can do it with uh, with being stable and providing for for your loved ones and that's a, a, and i think that's the golden spot that you can really be successful and, and help people uh, through what you love so if we could create a system or a world that you can be an artist, an honest artist, that your, uh, your reason for doing that is to express yourself or to bring people together or make a person smile. And you can also be stable money-wise to support yourself and your family without compromising yourself or depending on big companies or a rich man. Or, uh, I think we, we, we succeeded. Wow, that was incredible, guys. I really love all of your opinions. Now, actually, I would like to take your value of Julia and Jonathan and said what we can improve in Catal Aviv, if you have any ideas or if you have any questions that you don't know exactly what we are doing. It's always nice if you have any question or just speak and we will take your war to do whatever you want you know it's like oh i feel that in fine arts we need that thing you know oh we need that place or we could build that how we can transmit fine arts you know the visual content you know that people can where we can reach for free fine arts for example i don't know i give really open if someone has anything to say julian do you want to say something <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, um, well, I don't know. I think generally a lot happens through connections in the art world. I mean, I'm talking about like, I don't know, in dance and composition, but I can imagine that's just the same. You need to know the right people. So I think in general, it's good to like connect and create a network um, to support you, but also to help supporting others. Thank you, Julia. And now, Jonathan, if you have the last thing that you would like to share or comment or ask. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think it's beautiful to, I was going to talk about, I was going to comment on the thing about artists becoming rich and wealthy and just say that if, if, if I was ever to be, become rich from dance, I would see it important to, to support the upcoming artists, similar to what Rafael Luz says. And like, so it's also us, it's our responsibility to distribute that wealth in the community. And that starts with you and your channel and distributing, you know, followers and exposure uh, amongst others, promoting our film. Um, it's not wealth like money wise, perhaps, but, but, you know, recognition. So I think that's really beautiful. I like that a lot. Um, and yeah, yeah. Connections and network. I'm really happy to be back and talking with Rafaelos and Julia because it's been a while. Um, and these are really valuable connections, I believe, also for future potential collaborations. Yeah, so that's great. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. That, that actually, it was, I think, a really lovely interview. We have been talking for almost one hour. We got all these small things inside you as a human being, also those details in the production that people is going to be really excited to see and see. I want to see more about those artists. Um, last thing, actually, because we, you create this project, but do you have any upcoming projects that you would like to promote? Because now is the moment. And if you have anything that you are creating and you say yes, it's going to be released you can check the link on the description just you can someone wants to promote something now is the turn okay i can i can jump in and say that uh last summer i was part of starting a, a, a collective in copenhagen with um, a mix of seven artists some dancers some writers composers um, and we kind of all do everything actors um and it's, uh, it's a little hard to, maybe when you post this, we can put it in the caption, but there's Spank Densitator, and it's in Danish, but we have an Instagram account. You can check out what we do. Julia, do you have something that you would like to promote? Uh, yes, actually. Um, I, I think I talked about it briefly, that we have this environmental collective, which is called Spin, like spider in Dutch. And the idea is also a little bit to have the spider as a metaphor to like connect different issues that are in a sense connected, like for example, the climate crisis and like exploitation of resources and colonialism and they are all entangled and that we want to like address these topics. And we've been like engaged a bit in protests and helped organizing lectures and at the moment we are working on a magazine. Um, and the topic of the first magazine will be water. And we had an open call, so there's contributions from students, but also from professionals. And it's like a mixture of different positions that are all in a way connected to like climate change or to our relationship to nature. Um, yeah, and um, it's probably going to maybe be come out in February or March. And um, yeah, I can also send you the link to our website. I think we could finish for today and just let's try to reach each other if you need something and make a community that that's what's going on right <laughs> and to support other projects and to make it really go farther and farther and if you succeed i will succeed for sure okay thank you very much people all the audience that are looking to us we really love you we really appreciate you and you can just open your mics and just scream all together like yes Okay, come on, guys, you can and let's scream one, two, three. Yes, yes! <laughs> nice guys. Thank okay, you, see you, people. Keep creating. Enjoy. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.